You know what we're about to do? We're about to get real. Pastors, how many have ever wanted to shoot the sound man? Yeah. We're about to have conversations that Christians have behind closed doors. The scary ones, the ones that make you feel uncomfortable, that's where we're going. Trip the music director when he walked across the platform. Why? Because we're family. Ustedes son mi familia. Turn up the air conditioner and just let the grandmas grind. Just get up one day and say, you can have this whole thing and never raise a budget again. So this is the Brian and Janelle podcast. She's Janelle, I'm Brian. And if you don't want to miss anything, just hit that subscribe button. This is the Brian and Janelle podcast. We've been sitting on this article from Barna Research uh, and haven't known what to do with it because it's a bummer. Mm-hmm. It is very sad. It's how the, the percentage of pastors who thought about quitting full-time ministry in the and last many, year. Many of who have. Like I've seen articles talking about pastors join the great resignation, like walking away from yeah, their really? ministry. Yeah. And I haven't known when to share it because it's like, you know, hi, I'm Debbie Downer and yeah. here's an article. Yeah. But in this case, uh, I'll share the information with you because just yesterday I got in the mail. It was just published yesterday in the mail. Email. I didn't get anything in the mail yesterday. Uh, Lifeway Research surveyed pastors about their greatest needs. And they got an answer on what pastors need. So I felt like there was a way for us to talk about how many felt about quitting, but then also say, essentially, here's what we can do about it. Oh, that's good. So let's start with the real bad news here. Recent data collected from Barna uh, indicate that U.S. pastors are currently in crisis. In 2021 alone, it was a dramatic increase of the number of pastors thinking about quitting ministry entirely. With pastors' well-being on the line and many on the brink of burnout, 38% indicate they've considered quitting full-time ministry in 2021. Wow. Wow. 38% have spent at least some time going, I think I'm done. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Not changing churches, quitting ministry. A deeper analysis of this information uh, shows that some groups are faring worse than others. And this is where it even gets more alarming, I think. Pastors age 45 and under, so the younger pastors, 46% have thought about quitting in the last year. What? Wow. Pastors 45 and older, 34%. So you've got, I mean, at the six year roundup, right? Isn't that what they say in math class? Six year roundup. So essentially half of pastors 45 and under have thought about quitting full time ministry in the last year. Hmm. Brutal. Absolutely brutal. So the October 2021 data that came out when they finished it said that many pastors are not faring well in multiple categories of well-being, including spiritual, physical, emotional, vocational, and financial. So Barna tried to figure out not only how many have thought about quitting, but how healthy are pastors. Mm. So healthy pastors are defined by those who scored themselves either excellent or good on all six well-being categories. So there's six well-being categories. You have a scale. You have to say, I'm excellent or good in areas, again, like spiritual health, physical health, emotional, vocational, financial, all that stuff. Currently, how many are in the healthy category? What do you think? Self-assessment, how many are healthy? I would say under 15%. Is that We're already down. It's it's higher. It's higher. Okay, good, good. good. In the 20s? (laughs) In the 20s? Yeah. It's actually a little higher than that. So, wow, you are a Debbie Downer today. Well. Only 35% of American pastors... Mm-hmm. would fall into the healthy category in self-assessing their their well-being when it comes to, again, financial, physical, emotional. Yeah. 35% are healthy. Wow. That's still super low. Can you imagine that as a grade? It's like, psh, retake that class, yeah. dude. 35 <laughs> isn't like an F. 35 is a, wow, you tried hard <laughs> wow. to fail this class. Yeah. <laughs> yes. 
Like you put significant effort oh, into getting the lowest possible God. percentage. Yes. I knew a guy, a guy named Keith in my health class in high school. Tried to see how low he could get his percentage in class. Are you serious? I'm not kidding. What class wow. was that? It was health. I mean, it was a joke anyway, but... What? Sorry, health teachers. It was great, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to get an email. But so... Man. This is pretty brutal. Yes. Overall, 38% of pastors have thought about quitting, but if you narrow it down, pastors 45 and under, 46% have thought about quitting in the last year, and well over half are really not doing okay. They're not healthy. Oh. Hmm. So what do we do about it? Lifeway Research found the answers when they found out pastors' greatest needs. Mm -hmm. We'll get to that in just a minute. Hey, it's Brian. If you've been a faithful listener to this podcast, we're just super grateful for you. Can't thank you enough for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us in our journey to follow Jesus a little more closely every day. But I got to remind you about something. We're listener-supported. We're a ministry of Moody Radio in Cleveland, and it's donations from people who listen to us, just like you, that allow us to keep making episodes. So rather than tiptoe, because I'm not good at that, or dance around it, because I certainly can't dance, I'm going to be direct. We need your money, your financial support. Would you consider a donation to this ministry? A gift of any amount will make a huge difference. If you want to donate, we'd be so grateful. Just go to moodyradio.org slash Cleveland. Again, moodyradio.org slash Cleveland. Thanks. I'm going to try to make a positive spin on a, uh, on a sad story yeah. that's been much reported. We haven't talked about it much because it's such a bummer. But uh, Barna Research found out that 38% of pastors have thought about quitting in 2021. Mm -hmm. Not quitting their church, but ministry altogether. Wow. And for pastors 45 and under, 46% have thought about quitting altogether, being in ministry. And then when assessing their own health in six different ways, whether it's finances or physical or emotional, only 35% of America's pastors will be considered healthy. Wow. We got an issue going on yeah, here. Yeah, we do. Which is why I was relieved to see yesterday LifeWay Research just came out yesterday with brand new information. So they, after speaking directly with pastors to gather their perspectives on their ministry and personal challenges, LifeWay Research surveyed 1,000 U.S. pastors for the 2022 Greatest Needs of Pastors study. The team began to study that were, by speaking to pastors, asking them to think about beyond the pandemic struggles. So set those aside. Those are unique. Okay. Like what are your biggest needs and issues as a pastor? today, yeah. aside from the pandemic. That's good, I wanna know that. Yeah. 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 So they narrowed things down, there were 17 that the things the majority selected, but let's do the top five. All right, pastors, thousand pastors, what are the greatest needs or issues you're facing right now? Because now we know what we can do about the issues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Coming in at number five, they have a need, which is friendships and fellowship with others. 69% yeah. of pastors say, what do you need? Friendship and fellowship. Yeah. Yeah. And not in the church. That's what I've seen. Yeah. That's, they just need friends. Yeah, but I've, I know several pa pastors that are very close to me, and they've even said specifically friends that are not congregants, that are not connected mm. to the church, because there's the issue of privacy. There's a lot connected to, like, when you're a pastor to someone and the friendship is just different. And so having a safe space where you can just kind of pour out and feel feel good and feel fine and safe about it. I, I do think there's something congregants can do to meet this need because I would okay. interpret this another way too, where if they need friendship and fellowship, they are lonely. Yeah, oh yeah. And so oftentimes when we go to the pastor, we go to them because we need, need something. something. Yeah, oh yeah. What if you just cause sent an email oh i like that and asked, asked them to go to coffee not because you want something or need counseling or anything just because you want to see how they're doing yeah. yeah what if you invite them to dinner not for any agenda but just because mm -hmm. maybe fewer pastors will report i just need a friend i'm lonely yeah coming in at number four on the list of hey pastors what do you most need right now what's the the, the transcendent need of pastors they need consistency in personal prayer they're struggling in their prayer lives. 72% say, man, I just need consistent prayer in my life. Yeah. Just like the rest of us. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're real people. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. But in their case, I mean, how can we help with that? 
I mean, not that I want to try to solve all the world's problems, but we ask a lot of our pastors. Yeah, we do. I think maybe if you're an elder or a, or a, however you call it, a trustee, whatever you want to call it, deacon, maybe we can encourage our pastors to that we want them as part of their workday to schedule prayer. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. All right. When asking pastors what are they what do you need the most? Number three, at seventy five percent, people's apathy or lack of commitment. Yeah, I imagine that's very frustrating. They're frustrated that, put another way, we don't care. Yeah and they can't count on us. Mm -hmm. People's apathy and lack of commitment. Wow. Now, I would interpret this as not, it's not that we don't care about them. I I think they're seeing us go through the motions. Yeah. Hey, Pastor, Mm -hmm. great message today. Mm -hmm. See ya. Mm -hmm. Like, do we really care about our relationship with Christ and about growing deeper with him? Right. And even um, that 80-20 thing. Like mm-hmm. uh, people that aren't committed to helping and contributing and, you know, and, and the, the vision of the church and, and what's going on. I can see pastors feeling alone in that sense because mm-hmm. we like we want to consume. Yeah. So a lot of these people, instead of helping, include I'm going to include myself, we complain versus being part of what's going on. And we don't really want to be transformed. We want to be able to use the Bible to grab a verse and fight with people on social media. Yeah. Yeah. About our favorite political topic or whatever. Mm-hmm. The number two thing, mm-hmm. again, pastors, what are the biggest needs and issues you're facing today? Number two, fostering connections with unchurched people. 76% say, I, I need to foster connections with unchurched people. And I just, I, I'm not. And it's again, I would say we're so needy. We don't give them time and margin right. to do that. The pastor's so busy taking care of our mess. Yeah, and are, and are we creating a culture in our church that would be conducive to unchurched people showing up? Oh wow! Uh, finally, the n- number one agreed upon need: seventy-seven percent of pastors agreed that the biggest issue mm-hmm. facing pastors, the biggest need or issue, developing leaders and volunteers. That's a number one. Number one. Wow! To be successful in church ministry, they need people to lead and to help. Right. You know, I've even and they heard, just can't find it. I've even heard recently for those who even want to help, most of the people are like, "I want to preach. I want to be like a leader." And <laughs> now we don't need that. Yeah. <laughs> right. Versus, like, we don't see, and I've heard this in the last week from a leader in the church. We don't. We're seeing less and less of people saying, "I just want to help set up the tables." Or I want to help, like the little stuff, the behind the scenes stuff, mm-hmm. those are harder to get. And that's really the foundation of what's going on in the church is the help gifting or that kind of activity. And here's what's, what I find compelling here. Lifeway didn't stop there. Mm-hmm. They went one step further trying to unpack this because remember, 38% of pastors have thought about quitting. So they said, okay, pastors, narrow down your list. We want to see the single greatest need re- that requires your attention. Like, don't look at a list and give yeah. and check all of the above. Pick yeah. one. What's the big one? Top of the list? People's apathy and lack of commitment. Hmm. If asked to really narrow it down to what is the greatest need you have, the greatest issue you're facing in your ministry life, that now we're knowing that many pastors think about quitting. It's that we don't care and we aren't committed. Wow. What do you make of that? It makes me look back at times, like in myself, in terms of how I can do better. I think it's also connected to the conversation we had earlier about we're very busy. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's unfortunate. You kind of at least I think of a a sporting coach, say a football coach who is ready at practice and, you know, you got a handful of guys there and they start trickling in, you know, they're just giving a half-hearted effort and and you'd be like, guys, we got to win this game this week. Yeah, coach, whatever. It's almost that way with our church that we come in, we're more than willing to sit and have people sing to us and have somebody speak to us, but we don't want to help with the nursery or just setting up tables, like Janelle said. And then he- here's where the real tragedy comes in. It's how I would mm-hmm. address this. 
And I think we can all, we all need to be honest with ourselves. Here's, here's what I would do. Mm -hmm. Wow, people today sure are awful. <laughs> yeah. To notice what I didn't say. Me. Not, nothing about you. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody listening right now, I've got the majority of people going, man, if other people were just more like me, pastors wouldn't be so sad. Mm. Yeah. No, no, no. No, not at it's all. It's you. It's me. It's me. Like, do we really comprehend that? Right. You know, like, if you're a pastor, you're following and loving Jesus with your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and you want others to follow him too. And following Jesus is supposed to be transformative. Yeah. When you follow Jesus, you are born again. The old is gone. The new is here. Mm -hmm. You are different than you were before. And I don't think that very many people truly want transformation. They want their new BFF to be Jesus, yeah. to fit nicely into what they're already doing. Yeah. They want, again, Jesus to support their ideology they already have. They're going to melt him into it. No, no. He wants to transform you into a new person. And pastors are there to help guide us through that. Church leaders set up in scripture. That's, there's qualifications for them. They want your heart and mind to be transformed by the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the biggest issue they're facing is that we don't care and we're not committed. And I bet if you pressed him, it's we don't care about the gospel, about Jesus, about transformative faith. Mm. Lord, forgive me for being part of that problem. Oh, yeah. And our challenge for you today is would you be bold enough to put yourself on the list of the problem? For your church's sake, for your pastor's sake, would you be willing to say, maybe it's me that's not committed and doesn't care? Mm. And then what would you do? Hey, hold up. Where are you going? You know you liked your time with us. You want more. So go ahead, look down, hit that button right there and subscribe, and you'll get updated episodes, and then you can hang some more. And guess what? You can help us out. How? A five-star rating. Hello? You can also hang with us live weekday mornings from 6 to 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Download the Moody Radio mobile app, and you're able to connect with us. Or just go to brianandjanelle.org. And listen, we didn't put all this together all by ourselves. There's some great people behind this production. We want to thank Ron Eastwood, Kelly Ryder, Paul Carter, Mike Reynolds, Alan Perry, and our awesome and fearless leader, Josue Vita. And finally, this podcast is a production of Moody Radio in Cleveland, a ministry of Moody Bible Institute.